Welcome back to the channel. Do subscribe and follow on Instagram. So, what exactly is computer science? So, here are some examples of uh, how uh, computer science is becoming regular part of daily life. Uh, one being computer scientists are developing sensors that can measure moisture, soil nutrition in real time. And, you know, uh, this information gets back to the farms so that they can be uh, grow better yield uh, as, as we uh, talk about this. Uh, computer science is also changing the way we can shop, do businesses. You know, all uh, you must have also noticed that, you know, some someone like, uh, uh, you know, e-commerce is a big thing currently in the world. So computer science is enabling us to, you know, uh, shop and do businesses online. Services like Skype, even the one which we're using Zoom, uh, we use all this functionality of video chatting where we can provide real life, uh, you know, a real time translation, allowing people to speak, uh, understand each other, you know, have a conversation without even meeting face to face. So we are, you know, uh, even removing language barriers. A lot of us, uh, especially me, I'm from uh, currently in Dubai. But a lot of our uh, guests today are from India and we are, uh, you know, uh, interacting today. And this is mainly because of the advancements in computer science. Why is computer science for everyone? Uh, of course, you know, it allows uh, uh, students or even anyone, you know, who have the knowledge and skills for the success for the future. It also enables a lot of careers it opens door to and equalizes opportunity for all. You would also notice a lot of the careers currently, everyone requires computing, uh, you know, skills, whether it be, you know, uh, knowledge of the technical, uh, you know, uh, IT related techniques, or even, you know, a small uh, office based skills, which every career requires. So all of these are actually part and part uh, parcel of the careers which we are actually developing at the moment. All told, computer science learning experiences prepare students for, you know, success across sectors. They equip students with core life uh, skills and they provide a foundation for citizenship in today's world. And school across the country and around the world are working to increase access to such quality computer science education. And we want that to happen and, you know, essentially literacy for today's world. We want to improve, uh, you know, students to be effectively you know how they can you know enable themselves and you know solve problems using computer science though is is the computer science uh, you know is is it actually uh, taking in taking in a such a way that you know everyone is having access to i would say no uh, i mean if if you all feel we have a poll right now uh, i mean actually if you can just uh, you know play the poll the first question I just want to know across the uh, the participants which we have today is there anyone who understands that if computer science as, as an education is, uh, you know, has a gender equality or even uh, a lot of, you know, privileged people or are they having access to all of that or not? So if we can run the poll, um, Nakshiji. Uh, yes, RF, I have already launched the first question. Okay, yeah. So we'll, we'll just wait for uh, a minute and then we can move. Yeah, uh, could we launch the result as well? Uh, yes, Arif, I'm ending the yeah. poll now for everyone. I'm sharing the results on your screen. So the results are there on the screen. Uh, for the question, are you aware of the gender inequality in computer science education? 38% have said yes, and 62% disagree with it. Right, right. So yeah, so we, we can see there is, uh, you know, I mean, I was expecting uh, slightly more towards uh, the yes, because a lot of uh, uh, our, a lot of the guests today are, you know, educators and they feel, you know, a lot of students are, you know, we have uh, multilingual as well as, you know, a lot of students who are, uh, you know, part of the classrooms are females. So eventually we are giving them enough or, you know, equal education options in related, related to computer science. But the, actually, the facts 
say the other way only a fraction of these girls and women which we are actually teaching at school level are eventually taking up a career in computer science or in fact even in a stem in any any kind of stem degree and that that equates to around 25% so around 1/4 of the students which at school level are only you know going further and studying and this is basically mainly because we are not you know uh, creating that enough uh, opportunity and not you know creating enough excitement or opportunities for the uh, you know uh, the other gender which is the girls uh, and we can we can you know try and increase it as much as as it as we can uh, i'll be talking about how we can do that but as you can see i mean the result of course i'm not shocked with that <laughs> i i would have expected more yes but uh, this this is one of the issues of computer science education where uh, you know a lot of not only if we are talking only about the gender we are talking also about a lot of students who don't have equal opportunities to access computer science education uh, you know some of the students might have you know extra classes for computer science but a lot of students don't have that so why not we you know improve our education system in such a way that you know everyone has the equal opportunity equal access and everyone actually has that uh, you know uh, opportunity where they which they can you know pursue later on so what we can do of course the good news is that you know we have a uh, lot of you know organizations are taking steps to you know close that gender gap uh, you know a lot of the organizations and even the governments are now mindful of how we can engage girls in computer science and uh, you know uh, usually the major concept misconcept is that you know computer science is boring and you know a lot of uh, especially the girls or even a lot of students you know they don't uh, you know relate to this particular uh, computer science world at large and you know how how can we do that of course uh, you know if we uh, you know these are the five important insights which we can get into the action we can provide role models of course there are a lot of uh, you know um, you know uh, women in computer science who are uh, you know doing much better i i, I had a lot of conferences where you know a lot of speakers have been uh, women a lot of you know president ceo of computer science based organizations are women and this can actually provide a role model for a lot of uh, you know girls who are currently learning computer science this gives them you know uh, usually the fact that you know a lot of men are in the higher position doesn't allow women to get into it we can provide such role models to make sure you know uh, such kind of uh, you know we we are giving and understanding of that you know women can also reach at that particular point we have to of, of course generate excitement so when we when we talk about computer science we are talking about you know uh, you know soft skills as well as you know technical skills where the programming comes into play but you know a lot of projects are associated with you know creating a game you know a boy related game a car game or you know a shooting game or things like that why not you know we can improve our projects which we do at a school level or even at the university level where the at uh, any any kind of you know exclusive uh, you know uh, parties are involved and they are engaged at the same time so we should create that inner excitement we should you know create projects which uh, that particular party can you know relate to and that will create excitement of course we should provide hands on experience a lot of uh, the issue with uh, you know even the computer science as a whole is that a lot of hands on it's, it's more considered you know something software based but there are a lot of options where we can in integrate in, ter in terms of unplugged activities or things like that we can provide hands on experience so that uh, a lot of these young women and you know they can improve in their academics uh, not only related to computer science even in the other uh, subjects as well science and maths as well uh, provide encouragement one of the other issues at school level i have seen is that you know a lot of students who eventually if they have done half Uh, you know uh, uh, attempted a project as well they don't receive any kind of encouragement even an attempt is you know uh, the previous uh, um, webinar i spoke about the fear of failure actually provide you know uh, inhibits a lot of the you know uh, problems related to progressing so you can you can uh, you know you can always get rid of the fear of failure if if you encourage the students if they have done somewhat you can you know praise on their project what content they have tried what is their attempt eventually what problem they are solving so this can actually help a lot of these you know uh, parties which which we are not getting uh, equal education or you know access to the computer science we we can improve uh, you know uh, on that part 
and of course and create a growth mindset this is one of the important things which i wanted to also you know one of the five insights which we want to take we want to increase the growth mindset we should always involve and that you know in a research by you know uh, microsoft in 2017 which did a survey of over, over uh, you know 10000 girls and women uh, you know where they conducted interviews with a lot of non profit and academic uh, experts you know a lot of them uh, you know the conclusion of this survey was that a girls want to be creative and want to have a positive impact of the la- on the world but a lot of these out of this 10000 around 90% of them said that they didn't have enough opportunities and for that we as a individual also if you are an educator we want to increase the growth mindset if students uh, especially the girls if they want to be you know create a positive impact why not enable them why not give them you know enough opportunities so that they also have that mindset where they will you know uh, move on and you know try and learn and get into such kind of field so uh, of course uh, computer science the one slide which i showed you you must have seen some of the you know expected careers but here you can see a lot of these careers are there uh, involving students related to like you know fashion tech designers mobile developer medicine analyst data scientist music program engineer and i am pretty sure most of you must be surprised by the list uh, you know uh, you know usually computer science we think computer engineering or you know maybe a data scientist or some non related to it but you know there is a lot of scope in the computer science uh, studying computer science can only you know take you towards the exciting careers not only the ones which are currently present also the ones which are co- keep on continuing uh, a new a lot of new careers are coming up uh, which you know students can get uh, you know excited about and this can eventually be taken up if they are a computer science expert or you know they have uh, somewhat understanding of the computer science as a whole so yeah we can move on uh, where can computer tech st- students uh, of course if a student i'm not talking about you know be very, very, very generic if they don't want to take any computer science in the future as well if in, in university level or with the college level even high school level so it it doesn't actually make you know them to you know lead lead to that path itself any computer science knowledge or skills they have acquired it is more like transferable skills this will take student to a brighter future it will open all sort all sort of doors to amazing careers and you know it will lead them to you know uh, have a lot of these skills which are very, which which are required at the moment uh, in current uh, age so we move on to the basic uh, idea of our uh, uh, webinar today which is the approaches to computer science teaching and how we can improve that uh, so we will first discuss about the th- uh, the four major approaches which we you know usually uh, consider while while teaching computer science one is the constructivist which is basically based on the central notion that you know learners construct their own uh, you know understanding of the world around them and what exp- based on the experience they live and grow and you know based on these they can select and transform information from past and current knowledge and they can you know improve and experience into new personal knowledge and understanding so this is the constructive approach and this approach allows learners to be active in the process of constructing meaningful and uh, meaningful knowledge rather than you know passively receiving information so it fosters critical thinking and provides learning with a learning uh, provide learners with a learning environment that helps them make connections with their learning so this is the constructive uh, you know mindset or the approach which a lot of you know educators are currently using it and uh, you know this the construction the process of learning teachers have a major role in that so you know in, including you know uh, influencing uh, or creating motivating conditions for students you know taking the responsibility of creating problem situations fostering acquisition and retrieval of prior knowledge or creating the process of learning not the product of learning so this approach is currently and this you know majorly falls under the shoulder of teacher where the learning comes from the teacher where they are the ones who are uh you know constructively creating uh, enough uh, learn learning opportunities for the students where they can relate it once they are learning they can relate it with the world as well the next one is the collaborative learning uh, it is an educational approach to teaching and learning where you know all the you know stakeholders of learning are working together so whether it's the teacher their uh, the students uh, the teachers who are not involved in computer science or even that they are working together to solve a problem and complete a task and create a problem or create a product 
so computer uh, this collaborative learning is of course an umbrella term for a variety of educational approach involving joint intellectual effort by students or you know where the students and teachers are working together collectively or you know a lot of these activities can vary but you know these mostly uh center around that student exploration or you know application of the course materials not instead of you know just going through the teachers presentation or you know explicitly explaining what is there in the you know textbook so this learning of this particular approach is you know more natural towards this uh, you know like a, almost like a societal uh, social act where the participants are talking among themselves it is like you know talking and how the learning occurs together so this is how the collaborative learning environment is uh, created and here the learning something can be interpreted as you know uh, performing uh, you know problem solving or you know uh, together they are in, uh, you know doing such some kind of interaction whether it is face to face or computer mediated where they are actually trying to uh, you know uh, understand the problem and they are trying to you know discuss or brainstorm the solution so such kind of environment where the collaborative learning is actually happening this approach also uh, you know allows uh, you know uh, teachers where they, they have to completely understand the learners preferred learning styles and this involves a bit of you know uh, extra work for the teachers where they have to involve a lot of strategies depending on the students learning style and it can vary within the class itself uh where you know uh, if you are learn if you are talking about online since in the last two years we have had a lot of online a lot of collaborative learning you can you know use uh, you know a lot of you know uh, rooms uh, rooms in the you know online world itself where you can build build to, uh, students together uh, in groups and you know you can ask them to discuss a particular problem and so on jigsaw method you can also use where you know uh, you can give you can provide a puzzle and you can ask students to find out that the final jigsaw you know how to you know uh, find out and that particular option what will fit uh, or you, you would or you could say retrofit you know that particular problem which is currently there uh, of course think pair and share is another approach uh, strategy which is used in the collaborative uh, you know uh, learning method integrated process approach again uh, where the teacher has to integrate a lot of processes they have to integrate subjects integrate a lot of cross curriculum approaches also happening in the same time so students can relate okay i've learned this in science this is how the theory of science works and how can i you know use that and you know integrate in a computer science world as well peer teaching is another collaborative way, way where you know where the student uh, takes the role of you know almost like a teacher or a facilitator when they are done with their work they can help their other students or they can you know uh, you know correct each other you know uh, instead of a teacher explaining them where they have gone wrong so it also process you know provide taking almost like a role reversal where the teacher actually can uh, you know uh, take a step back or be like a facilitator and where the peers are you know doing the teachers work where they are correcting each other the next approach is the integrative approach where uh, the goal of this particular approach is to enable uh the learner to master those situation he or she will be facing or they have to deal with in the future in their professional or private life and this integrated approach is also you know something which have started just recently around 2020 where a lot of teachers actually uh using this approach which you know providing learners with a learning environment that helps them make connection of the learner learning across curriculum so it uh, focuses on connections rather than the teaching isolated facts so as you can see from this chart as well which is taken from uh, the brian easley uh, uh, the site which you know says that you know we can integrate a lot of this academic what they are learning the scholarly learning they can do you know practical experiments related to that and they are also understanding how that emphasis is going to happen how you know there is actually a moral value related to that so this is the integrated approach which a lot of uh, you know educators are currently you know taking and to to this effect uh, you know the pedagogy related to this integration has four major objectives uh, you know making sense of the learning of process differentiating matters by relevance applying the learning to practical uh, situations and associating the learned elements so this four you know objectives if they are met it it can eventually you know lead up to the integrated approach which is highly advised at this point uh the next approach is the inquiry based approach uh, which is you know uh, 
requires more than simply answering the questions or getting right answers you know it's more like you know uh, where students are you know investigating exploring searching researching and you know they are studying based on that so this is a lot related to uh, you know uh, more of you know answering questions uh, or then you know then getting an answer ready made for them so you know this is this is another underlying reason for this is that you know uh, of this particular approach is success is that you know uh, because of the recent technical developments which we have throughout because of the covid uh, and the inquiry process allows uh, and because of the electronic learning environment this inquiry process is much more supported and a lot of students are coming up with a lot of questions and here the educators have to play an active role throughout the process by establishing a culture where ideas are respectfully you know challenged tested and redefined so here it's more about you know uh, you know give giving them a statement or you know giving them a theory where the students have to you know research about it they can hypothesize a lot of things they can research they can you know understand how this can be tested how it can be redefined how it can be viewed as an improvable you know uh, uh, you know more more from a, from the position of you know wondering uh, you know what is already enacted understanding compared to you know questioning about that what is the fact about that so here this approach again uh, allows a lot of other strategies which can be adopted in this approach itself where you are you have to use a lot of simulation demonstration experiment field study project work and this is more uh, you know related to the stem field and uh, in my last webinar also i explained that you know how we can improve and stem Uh, learning is not you know associated only with uh, you know just uh, in their particular lab or any science experiments which they do it is related to it can be you know uh, taken into any classroom whether it's a computer science class a science class math class or not the stem careers or the stem components can be integrated anyhow and this approach allows that more more so yeah and above all of course all the uh, pedagogical approaches which i explained these are more uh, you know we can uh, place uh, on of course the one which i explained are more approaches from the teachers and uh, but these approaches also can be placed you know uh, in on a spectrum from teacher centered to a learner centered where we are you know moving from more from a teacher centered where you know teachers is just continuously talking which is the more of the constructive uh, approach now we are moving on to the student centered where you know inquiry based learning is happening cooperative collaborative uh you know a lot of uh, emphasis in even in the uh, integrated approach is also happening so uh, of course for the ones who are not aware of what the teacher centered uh, pedagogy is so this it positions the teacher uh, at the center of the learning process and typically relies on methods like you know whole class lecture or rote memorization or you know chorus answers you know you ask a question and you are, you wait for a response you know this approach is kind of I, i'm pretty sure all of you are also aware of this is kind of uh, you know obsolete at the moment and it's all very criticized uh, especially especially when you know students uh, have to complete a lot of lower order task and you know students uh, are afraid of the teachers you know if they are having any doubts because they the teacher expects students to know you know based on their teaching what they have done and you know if the students are you know completely afraid of the teacher to ask any doubts on or that the student centered approach in fact is you know uh, is more uh, generally draws on the learning theories uh, where suggesting learners can play an active ro active role in the learning process so students therefore can use their prior knowledge and you know use their new learning and create knowledge what they want to learn from what the teacher has been uh, you know provided here the teacher is more like a facilitator this they facilitate this process and they will create and structure the condition for learning and this entire student based approach will allow you know a lot of you know students to think like an expert they will do a lot of real life activities it will help them you know in community service job placements and you know they can construct their own plan of learning as as they you know opposed to where the teacher is planning for that yeah uh, so i just want to know we can run the next uh, poll where uh, we just want to understand which pedagogical approach which is currently used by the teachers i um, mean actually if we can run the poll yes i'm doing it uh, 
I've launched the poll. I hope everyone can see them. I see it on the screens. I'm ending the poll now and I'll share the results with all of you to see. So the question is, which approaches do you feel is satisfying for the computer science curriculum? 2% so say it's the constructivist approach. 49% say it's collaborative learning. 29% say it's an integrative approach, while 20% say it's an inquiry-based approach. The results are on your uh, screens to see for all of you. Arif. Yeah. yeah, so of course it's very interesting based on the poll results. A lot of, I mean, uh, a lot of uh, you, I mean, only around 22% of uh, the participants today believe in constructive, but if you notice a lot of, uh, you know, computer science teachers or even, you know, uh, at any stage, for the even primary, middle school, even high school, a lot of them still use the constructive method. Uh, Forty-nine percent was collaborative, right? Yes, sir. Forty-nine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so collaborative. Yeah, of course. We we you know forty-nine percent. I I mean I was expecting much more lower, but you know I I, I I'm assuming the question was you know what is much much better approach. But you know if we see the current way of teaching which we have. Uh, a lot of these 40, even the 49 person, if they want to do it also, they wouldn't, you know, be able to do it because of the time prescribed to them and, uh, you know, uh, the portion they have to complete and so on. Uh, so, I mean, all these methods only, uh, you know, are uh, at the moment, you know, these are something which the teachers we can just dream of uh, because of the time limitation and, you know, a lot of uh, classes have been assigned to them. They have to complete portions and so on. But of course, hopefully we see a day, you know, where we move on from, of course, not only from constructive to collaborative, we want to move on towards the later stage or the, of the uh, spectrum where we involve, you know, inquiry based as well as in, a, uh, you know, all other approaches where, you know, the teacher takes the role of a facilitator, delegator or, you know, personal model uh, kind of a role. Yeah, so we move on. Uh, yeah, so of course, uh, the reason I took this role also is that, you know, a lot of, uh, this is one one of the other pedagogy which a lot of schools or teachers, you know, adapt to uh, currently. And this is something which is, which I would call it culturally relevant pedagogy, where, uh, you know, this pedagogy emphasis on valuing all learners knowledge, heritage and way of learning. And of course, this is kind of, uh, you know, far fetched at the moment. But, you know, uh, this methodology is, you know, almost like, you know, you take a curriculum and you begin working your way up where you are, you know, seeing which approach will be much easier. And then based on that, you create the learning material. So, of course, for computing to be relevant, engaging and accessible to all, educators should reflect on their curriculum first and then, you know, move on to which approach will be better to, you know, conduct this curriculum. And educators can draw on the breadth of students' experience and cultural knowledge. This will allow them, of course, to build much better learning materials. Also, they can, you know, have the personal meaning for the learners. And this, they can discuss issues of bias, social justice, and so on. So this kind of a teaching framework where, you know, we are incorporating and valuing all the learners' knowledge, okay, it will only, you know, cause uh, students to, you know, understand much much better and it is you know uh, 
it is important and when we are using the term culture we don't want to you know focus on only one characteristic you know a person cultural identity you know, based on wh- where they come from and so on uh, it is more you know making computing responsive to different elements of learners cultural identities like youth culture or you know uh, uh, getting a key influencing influence from you know learners interests or attitudes so this will engage a wide range of learners and the point which i spoke about at the start where we are talking about inclusivity we this cultural relevant pedagogy will only help uh, you know a lot of these kind of uh, parties to you know get and they will improve their the learners attitudes towards the subject and this is one i mean it's not technically or you know theoretically also there but this is something which a lot of schools can adopt to you don't have to you know uh move uh, a lot of things they should just you know uh, have an open mind and you know improve on what curriculum they have and they can easily adopt to the learning approach uh, and all they have to do is you know working their way up and then you know improve their learning materials so everyone regardless of where they come from are having and they can relate to and they can learn from that so we'll now quickly move on to uh, the next part of the webinar which is we want to understand for teaching computer science what are the research based classroom what does what does research suggest and what are the better ways which we can use of course the approaches which we mentioned is an approach from the teachers end but what are the strategies which we can actually do to implement in the computer science yeah first starting with uh, you know uh, of course an effective pedagogy it is something you know there is no fixed method of you know teaching as i mentioned this approach is why i use this approaches is because every school every teacher will have a unique methodology or unique approach to that and you know the pedagogy which goes around this and the teaching strategies goes around this will come more or less uh, to the points which i am going to discuss so this pedagogy which we'll discuss is the heart of good teaching and learning and successful computer teachers can combine this knowledge of the subject with evidence based teaching practices so this will only allow uh, you know students and uh, even uh, even teachers in fact and even uh, overall the school where the teaching approaches will you know continue to emerge and evolve so as i mentioned the approach is something which you can look up to and the teaching materials and the pedagogy or the strategy which you use can be, can be based on how you are uh, you know want to take it forward the first one is of course lead with concept uh we would want to support and this is one of the most one of the most advanced uh, you know still it is used one of the oldest methods where we are uh, you know supporting people in the acquisition of knowledge through use of key concept terms vocabulary uh, you know uh, providing opportunities to you know have that shared and consistent understanding so a lot of uh, you will see textbooks or even a lesson materials will have glossaries concept maps displays uh you know along with you know a lot of uh, you know recall revision and all this are part of the concept so here we at the start of the lesson only if we provide them learning objectives vocabulary what all terms they are going to learn so this allows students to you know have a you know a, over in their head somewhere they will be understanding okay this is what we are going to learn and this is what we we are going to achieve while we are doing this particular lesson next approach or strategy which uh, which i want to discuss is the provide visuals uh, we here in this particular strategy the teachers can support students uh, you know uh, support the student understanding with visual examples so if we are talking about scratch we you know involved uh, you know reference sheets where you know what each code does and what exactly it means you know uh, and uh, we can break it down even the visuals you know starting with a lot of scaffolding and then gradually removing it as students you know removing the scaffolding or the instruction procedures so that students can progress much better so this is how i mean of course you can have a lot of options where you can involve multilingual options as well uh, you know uh, of course we currently are at the age where you know we are all english learn language learners where we are trying to learn and with with the common language we are trying to solve problems collaborate and you know learn new computer science vocabulary but it will always be handy if you have a reference in your local language which facilitates multilingual collaboration and uh, you know vocabulary and so on even the reference sheets can be in multilingual or the languages they learn including in the english so it is easy for them to relate 
a lot of students uh, can easily catch up with their uh, you know uh, local language compared to english and this will be a good example also when they are learning a lot of new things at the start the next one is the encouragement of students uh, here studies show that you know the encouragement from a parent and, uh, or a teacher is correlated with students having more interest in learning uh, computer science so it could be as simple as you know you are very good at uh, computer science your 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 project approach was much very good or you know i like the you know storyboard of the entire game you have made and so on and you we are using uh, an application to this particular one would be you know uh, you know you can use and you can allow students to use a lot of media to show what they are capable of in computer science like you would allow learners to see people like them doing computer science in videos you know how uh, they can create posters or things like that and we would want to praise all learners you know i like how you critically try to solve this problem you you know i like how you uh, you know debug this particular algorithm or you know how you preserved your knowledge and you 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 know related to that knowledge how from last year or something and you 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 know you you did not go to the wrong way so such kind of approaches will always you know encourage students and they will be related if you if you have uh, you know derogatory um, comment they will eventually lose their uh, you know computer science and computer science is nothing to do with you know failures or anything it is more of you know trying and you know exploring and so on next uh, strategy is decode the code a lot of you know this is done by researchers from university of chicago they created a strategy for you know exploring uh, scratch projects based on the reading comprehension strategy so they used to give a lot of example programs to the students and students used to used to make observation then you know uh, and they used to break down this complex code instead of getting overwhelmed so we we can also use this approach while teaching computer science where you know uh, we can give uh, code to them uh, it's almost like a read and explore code first when when you are teaching programming you can you know focus on a lot of reading uh, code reading activities before they start writing the actual code so it can be used in both block based or text based programming which will only encourage pupils to review and interpret the blocks of code and research of course show that you know um, students able to uh, read trace and explain code augments pupils uh, you know ability to write code and this will uh, and of course you know this method or strategy also allows this control group on questions about computer science this is another important way instead of you know traditional way where we show step this is what it does this is what it does we should give them a lot of code and they can read and you know understand the code what it mentioned over there the next one is leverage peer to peer support we want to assign students uh, roles where they are working in groups of pair uh, usually this is again a stem based uh, uh, strategy where we are giving individual accountability and you know we are giving rewards to those groups who are working much better uh, so this will a lot of students will have that success of engagement and a lot of students with de learning disabilities they can learn from each other and as i mentioned earlier also if you assign students the role of teacher support or tech support uh, the role you know uh, you know a lot of students might have issues in like you know when logging in or you know if they don't know our answer to a teacher question they can ask their friends and they can share the solution or the models or whatever help they require so peers can actually be a guiding support for a lot of students uh, where they can ask each other for help and they can offer support the next strategy is unplug and pack and repack which is basically if they are learning new concepts and lot of these new concepts especially in computer science these are very complex terms and ideas if you are talking about let's say you know functions the usability of function and you know reusability of code a lot of students will not you know understand what exactly these are and you know how these are so we can actually do the method which is unplug unpack and uh, repack where we are actually unplugging uh, you know doing a lot of unplugged activities related to that particular term and you are relating it with familiar context like you know uh, let's say if you are talking about functionalities we talk we can talk about let's say brushing a teeth is kind of a functionality of a uh, you know uh, a kind of a habit which you know everyone uh, you know takes up as they grow up 
so for example i don't have to now wake up and i don't have to some someone to tell me that you know i have to brush and even to brush i know what are the steps involved to that you know applying toothpaste to a toothbrush you know uh, you know moving the brush to and fro and you know rinsing my mouth and so on so i mean this comes as part of and then we can relate this much more with a complex term like a function or reusability of code so they can actually relate okay so this code instead of me if my mom keeps on telling me how to brush till the age of let's say 15 or 20 even so uh, it doesn't make sense we should actually this should be stored in our memory that okay we can uh, one thing is said multiple times we can actually keep it stored instead of you know uh, you know so this way is much better you can unplug you can unpack uh and you know in through unplugged activities like this as i suggested and you can repack this completely new understanding when they are actually now learning the concept of these complex concepts so they will have a you know much more secure understanding uh, as they go the next one is uh, creating real world relevance of course uh, for maximum student engagement it is important for problems to be meaningful and connected to values so making this connection in classrooms uh increases student motivation and persistence in computer science stem whatever we talk about uh of course this will only help them to solve real problems and you know uh they can attract students from you know this is another another way where we can you know relate a uh, lot of things related to the community which we are talking about and it will you know eventually uh, help the students because the relevance is there as uh, as usual so for example if we bring any abstract concept of computer science to life with real world or contextual examples and you know uh, if we if we emphasize or give a focus on interdependent in interdependencies with other curriculum subjects this can be achieved through the use of you know uh, you know proposing analogies storytelling around the concept you know unplugged activities of course will help you know uh, finding examples of the concept in pupils life you know this will only help them to have that relevance of the real world and this is again a very useful way where students can relate uh, to uh, computer science the next one is creating projects we usually in computer science we expect to, uh, to, uh, we if we are talking about python we teach students what are the code exactly uh, what it is supposed to do this function is for you know uh, trimming the strings or you know this is how we can find out uh, you know the nth element of the string and so on but eventually what are we you know teaching them they are just you know they don't know why are we searching for it if we you know present it in a manner where we are actually doing for a project if we are you know relating it you know giving them project for example if i want to know the grade of a student uh, you know from the entire class list so if you give such kind of project where they can use the knowledge which is taught this will actually you know help them retain a lot of knowledge as well so this again uh, you know will be easier also to evaluate because now we know this is a project we have taught them this concept we can easily see okay if they are able to solve the problem with what we have been taught and what else skills they have learned it is also easier for teachers to evaluate instead of you know just teaching them you know uh, code which they are lot of schools even when i was at you know high school i used to memorize a lot of code uh, especially this my binary sorting bubble sorting all of this you know uh, if if it was explained in a much better manner i would have you know be able to create the code myself instead of you know memorizing the code so uh, of course adding uh, projects or creating projects will help the next one is adding variety which is basically uh, you know uh, providing activities with different levels of di direction scaffolding and support so we would want different kind of activities and projects where there are different level of hand holding uh, for the students so if we uh, you know move on from you know a lot of scaffolding a lot of instruction based uh, where the students is eventually copying the code then moving on to you know less scaffolding where you just give the final projects and the objective of the project and they are completely doing and they are this direction we want to do this is the requirement of the project so if you give a lot of variety and we add this to our instruction based uh, module it will suit a lot of different objectives and all the pupils will be en engaged and encouraged to you know greater independence the next one is collaborative and share this is again another important uh, you know strategy where we want uh, students to look at each other's projects they, we would want to you know critique each other's project uh, you know uh, whether it is you know in form of gallery work where students are presenting 
at individual level or they can be a class presentation as where their whole project whole classroom is seeing what they are doing we can also see the, the you know, how a particular project or problem is solved by different kind of students and this will also help students you know to feel uh, you know significant they will feel proud of their work they will you know understand uh, you know how the process of this and how it is actually you know how real bugs and projects can be helped can help to help to celebrate and normalize debugging so another classroom approach of this particular application of this particular method is you know where students can record and narrate the digital artifacts uh, you know you can ask students to you know include examples of what they did how they you know debug what all problems they faced and so on so i mean if we increase collaboration specifically you know maybe you know in terms of peer programming or peer instruction or you know structured group tasks this will only you know it will stimulate classroom dialogue it will also develop their shared understanding of the concept which they are you are trying to you know learn cultivate a growth mindset we already spoke about this how we can you know uh, if we reward the process of learning instead of you know evaluating what they have done at the end of the project it will you know encourage students more to do and you know make mistakes and so on the next is the challenge misconceptions we can use a lot of formative questioning to uncover misconceptions so you should as a educator uh, should understand what what are the misconceptions related to the concepts you are teaching and this way you can ask questions related to the misconceptions so you would notice a lot of students make mistakes for example uh, re related to degrees if they want to turn right they you know turn uh, clockwise for example and if they turn left they will turn anti clockwise but if you turn clockwise 180 degrees is also turning almost like you know they are turn left as well so you can you know uncover lot of these misconceptions uh, misconceptions and they will also be aware of this misconception so they will know okay this direction i don't want to go this will only you know and this can happen through discussion concept mapping simple quizzes so you know the area of confusion is avoided and students are actually learning yeah so this strategy which i mentioned again is very very useful uh and a lot of teachers currently are might be using but a lot of this may be new for all of you i would want the next poll to run i just want to see how exactly uh we are uh, you know we, these are strategies which are being used so minakshi ji if you can run the last poll which you have yes arif i'm launching the poll now for everyone it's launched i hope everyone can see it on their screens I believe uh, almost all of them have voted. The question is: Are you using any of the mentioned strategies for teaching computer science? So, forty-nine percent of the people here are saying yes. Twenty-eight percent say somewhat yes. Nine percent uh, are of the opinion maybe, and nine percent say no. Four percent say they have never tried it. okay so i mean of course this this gives an as an insight of you know a lot of the educators currently who are as participants today they have had exposure to these strategies before and they must have you know understood you know these strategies are the way to go forward yeah so we can move on to the next part of the webinar uh, yeah why is computer science important in schools we already have a webinar related to that so i'm just summarizing you know of course this is it is an important element to strengthening existing education models and preparing students for the future and uh, you know a lot uh, you know a, a recent randomized control trial 
has shown that you know lessons in computational thinking improve students you know students response inhibition planning and coding skills so this also allows it is not only related to computer science this is related to a lot of world uh, you know other subjects or you know real world uh, problem solving as well so this is you know computer science is the only you know a uh, subject which is actually allowing students to learn or you know relate with a lot of other you know aspects of life or even other subjects as well there is a lot of cross curricular happening in computer science so that is why to computer science is very very important and uh, of course the issue with a lot of schools currently is that you know uh, computer science is not considered a computational uh, you know a foundational subject as a science or math would be so uh, you know computer science is all about logic problem solving creativity it's not you know still a lot of schools are you know teaching the microsoft office as part of computer science but computer science is of course that is just one aspect of computer science there is a lot more other options where there is graphics media there is you know uh, how to you know use the digital world how to stay safe uh what are the you know important aspects of computing systems or even rather you know programming the you know application based programming where they are creating app apps or you know uh they are integrating or improving on their algorithms and so on and also the latest technologies also these all are part of computer science where it, whether it's machine learning artificial intelligence ar vr a lot of students are actually learning and getting opportunity to you know create such technology so we would want computer science to be foundational subject in every uh, school uh, you know that is what the you know and we as a company as yastic also consider computer science as a foundational subject and of course uh, you know uh, this is a you know research done at microsoft where you know students success if we are creating computer science as a fundamental if we are creating it as fundamental uh, they will perform much better as subject this is based on the study and they will excel at problem solving a lot of uh teachers might i i have faced the multiple times you know if we ask any student to you know do you know how do i you know i'm stuck at this particular problem how do i solve it a lot of them will not be able to do it but if you are actually teaching them the you know uh, the rules of computer science where they are learning algorithm trying to you know pen down uh, brainstorming the ideas how each each you know draw a decision tree if this happens this is supposed to happen if not what is going to happen so this will actually excel them at problem solving and this will you know eventually help them in their in their respective careers whether it's or even in their personal life as well and of course if we are giving that emphasis on computer science uh in at the elementary level it they will you know 17% more likely to join attend college which currently as i said are around 1 billion jobs are going to be uh, only related to computer science we have to keep on preparing and students should not only be you know uh, i mean of course there is a saying that you know gen z the generation z after 1995 or all getting exposed to different kind of technologies so but we as a organization we believe instead of you know them just being users or you know uh, uh, just using technology we would want them to create technology where they are not uh, you know just the you know uh, they are not just uh, you know users they are actually not the end user they are actually the at the start of the you know production of it or you know uh, computer science based applications where they are creating it and they are uh, involved in the application of the computer science of course so i come to the end of end stage of my uh, talk today where we are going to introduce qubits so this is an initiative uh, from yatsik itself where we have developed uh, you know future ready computer science curriculum and this is completely teacher friendly and project based computer science curriculum which is designed for k12 school and these are some of the components which is coming along with the computers uh, yeah uh, the qubits where you will of course uh, you know initial i mean we had gone a lot of advancement with qubits itself over the last one year itself so our major component is the completely integrated and customized gamified e learning platform but we also provide you know for offline learning where we have the student edition books which the students can use it for uh, their own learning the learners uh, uh, edition books there is also of course as part of qubits we believe you know we should be allowing teachers 
to you know improve on their careers and you know professionally develop as well so there is a lot of teacher guides uh, for each and every module we provide and a lot of provision for you know all the teacher friendly uh, you know approach where we you can use the cubits platform for periodic usage or progress reports you can use it for formative and summative assessment you can also train yourself certify yourself in our platform itself then for example if you are uh, uh, you know elementary teacher if you want to learn python or javascript you can learn it through our platform just like students and you can improve on your career so that eventually you can teach high student high school students as well yeah so these are the two pathways which we have which we develop as part of our curriculum this is the dg pro and dg champs dg pro is completely focused on programming and ai we are the only one in the market which has a dedicated uh you know a uh, series on programming and artificial intelligence which we start from grade 1 and ai starts all the way from grade 3 so we prepare students on ai not only just you know teaching them theoretical concepts about ai we ask them to you know implement and create models machine learning models which can solve the current pro problems like you may maybe a medical uh, you know uh, assistance for you know covid for example so we we provide a lot of and this is all project based learning students will have uh, access to lot of multiple uh, multitudes of uh, pro projects which they do either in pro dg pro and dg champ the dg champ is basically on the computing fundamentals and software where not only there is a ex external uh, focus on the relevant technology so we talk about computing systems but we are talking about you know the more relevant ones such devices or cloud computing or you know how how to access internet and you know how to uh, mitigate a much better improved search on google for example and along with that we also involve a lot of software based learning where they are learning graphics paint uh, you know 3d designing uh, microsoft office uh, microsoft office of course relevant at that particular age and this is how these are the two different series which we have uh, you know taken care of uh so the programming and the ai focused curriculum of course i'll be showing you a demo of that we have aligned all the entire curriculum to all the international standards the major frameworks the some of the methodology which i explained today which the lot of these you know us based or uk based uh, you know frameworks we have uh, and all all the other standards whether it be cbse english uh, curriculum national curriculum or you know other other forms you know igcse or uh, you know uh, cambridge or even icse so uh, even even the state uh, boards which we have we have noticed you know all these are actually uh, you know subset of these international standards so we ours is aligned to all the international standards like csta california state standards isc english national curriculum and all other like cbse and all are just subset of that and we can also easily do the mapping but we have you know we have so uh, this product is you know set uh, more for the international market and we would want uh, you know a lot of these international standards are met using as part of that it is completely up to date curriculum so it is unlike any other curriculum which you must have seen uh, where uh, you know a textbook is not been revised for the last 5 6 years even so ours is continuously updated every 6 months you will see a change so Uh, change in the uh, module since ours is more of an online e-learning uh, curriculum so all the content on the e-learning will keep on updating as 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 the you know technology is changing or there is any new thing is coming up uh, but the textbook of course we you know change it annually uh, for every you know year so we we keep on you know it is designed by curriculum experts and scientists and it continuously updates to reflect new advancement in computer science and uh when we say it is a project based curriculum we have split down into different forms of project based where we have a lot of smaller smaller projects where the students have a lot of instruction based uh, procedure which they can just simply copy learn see how the project uh, code works and then they can just copy and then replicate the same there is a lot of collaborative projects where students have to collaborate among classmates for example they have to create uh a projects uh, based on you know uh creating a happy new year you know poster for example so they will be working in groups and so on individual challenges where their students they, what they have learned now they are you know there is no very almost little to no scaffolding no instruction where they are given a lot of individual challenges they can test their skills what they have learned 
we also have a bit by bit approach where a bigger project of course if you are learning let's give an example of scratch when they are learning uh, scratch and they are quite new to scratch and they don't know quite the complex uh, you know blocks related to scratch they cannot be able to create a you know multiplayer game so we break down the entire uh, you know uh, game or project which whichever you can call into a bit by bit approach we have broken down into smaller bits so as in they are learning if they are learning about variables that is where they are actually creating a, a score variable where they can update the score using the variable so we 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 have used a bit by bit approach so it's easier for students to do smaller projects and a bigger project as part of the bigger project bit by bit which we are building up uh, and then finally there is a capstone projects in most of the projects uh modules where uh, you know students are given a direction of where they want we want to go and what kind of uh, you know the object is what what is the requirement of the project and what they will be able to do on their own and every student will have a unique you know identity of this capstone project so they they can you know and this can be used almost like a you know a term based project uh, or it can be also uh, you know given as an assessment for the you know a final uh assessment for the students just to you know close that particular module and of course uh, the pedagogy which we have adapted we shall be showing it right now uh, we follow a project based learning approach uh, almost similar to uh, the approach which i discussed where we have uh, collaborative and in between uh, the uh, project based learning approach as well so we have used that to stimulate real life programming challenges for learners and this we have used an interdisciplinary approach to integrate science technology engineering and math plus the arts into computer science learning so we wanted students to relate what they are learning in science what they are learning in math and uh, so on where we can in in integrate the approach so this is the major pedagogy of course uh, this is uh, in line with all the approaches and strategies which i mentioned so one is the inspire which is basically uh, we inspire students about where to get a clear uh, idea or picture of what they can achieve what is there in that particular uh, learning they are going to do they are going to inspire from the real world how that particular concept is actually used or the application of the concept is there in the real world then comes the engaged where we you know through textual or video based learning we are actually equipping them to engage the students or uh, learners much better then comes the practice of course where we are engaging the students we are teaching a lot of newer concepts or even coding we would want students to practice it at the same time we want students to practice mainly because a lot of students when they are you know going through the um, uh, the engagement or the procedure they they don't you know usually they don't practice it out they feel okay they have done it teacher has shown in the uh, in the class i should be able to do it but we we believe in a method where you know we would want students to practice what is shown in the class also practice some advanced uh, activities where the students have to do a slightly varied uh, you know questions or quizzes or projects where which the which the teacher did not show so if they can you know adapt to those changes in the questions or methods they that that shows that okay they have practiced well enough and they are able now they have learned the skills as much as they want then comes the mastery where we would want the students to now apply their knowledge and skills to individual tasks where they are actually showing their uh, you know uh, they are showing their capability of how they have learned and what they can you know solve using those skills which they have learned so just for everyone to understand so inspire we want you know motivated learners to engage better in the learning process as i said we would want a clear picture of what they will achieve and what should they learn in it engages you know more uh, you know giving them or learn making them learn new skills and this is where uh, the teachers role comes as a facilitator where they are you know uh, engaging them you know we are equipping the students to different strategies where a variety of tasks are you know they are accomplishing practice i have shown you they will hone their skills they will you know practice similar tasks as they learn in the engage part master is where they are applying the knowledge and skills uh you know gaining experience and sharpening their skills reflect is the next part which is where we also in, you know we want students to inculcate a habit of reflecting on their learning to take charge of their own learning they should be uh understanding of their you know what they have learned what they have not 
and how they can learn much more if they are very much interested in that so reflection is you know of course is the is the part of their self improvement and yeah and then of course there is also an ss which we you know uh, provide as part of this we didn't include it on a pedagogy pedagogy because ss assessment is part of where the students are getting you know uh, evaluated on their knowledge and what they have learned and all all our assessments are not related to theory theoretical per se it is more related to debugging or you know the the approaches which i have shown where they are you know given a code and they have to find out mistakes in that uh, if they are given an uh, an an uh, you know a, a example task or something they are they have to create an algorithm out of that you know and if they are given a wrong uh, output how do we correct that so we would want students to be able to do things on their own and that is what we are preparing and that what is what entire cubits is all about and this is the you know this our uh, student centered instructional continuum uh, and this is what we actually you know use this sixth instruction in our cubits as well so at the copy code is basically we give students step by step instruction to follow targeted task is basically we are giving st students with uh, short task you know fix buggy buggy code or you know this is where uh, you know this is the code can you fill in the exact values for a specific moment parsons problems and so on the third is a shared coding where the students uh, teachers think aloud which is more more comes in the en engaged part where the teacher thinks aloud as they design and write code sometimes where they are demonstrating or live coding with the students at the same time they are taking uh, you know feedback from the teachers what should i do next what is happening and this is the live demonstration where the shared coding option is happening teacher is demonstrating while taking uh, you know options from the st students project based is basically where the students are provided with the project goal and creating a solution so we give a lot of if they are learning scratch we ask them to uh, you know create for example related to science as well so if they are learning animation we will ask them to create the life cycle of a frog for example so we are giving a lot of project based even within a sub unit level at every unit level they are, are doing it then query based is basically students consider a scenario uh, you know or a question which the teacher are, is providing them and they have to create a solution where they have to discover uh, different ways to how to you know use them how they can explore a set of new code commands or how we can do it in different ways uh, so we can we are also integrating in the query based as well and the last is the tinkering which allows uh, which, which giving students a completely unstructured student led exploration where they will explore a software on their own and this is also one of the parts of icsa standards as well where they are learning uh, you know it's almost like you know knowledgeable learner you know constructive learner and so on so they are their own owners of their own learning and they will you know create their own method how to explore a new software or if we are asking related to ai they will explore an ai ai based chatbot on their own and they will test it against uh, you know uh, the turing test and so on so of course within each of these instruction of the categories which i explained we would want you know students to you know come up with a lot so you would notice from the start to end we are moving on from activities which have more scaffolding to a less scaffolding and that is the entire pedagogy of ours is. and we would want this you know uh, this tightly constrained activities to go into more open and project based learning so this yeah comes so we'll explore the qubits now i know we are uh, slightly uh, towards the end and i've I ex actually exceeded the time limit but i um, thank i uh, thank all of you <laughs> for being patient and waiting at the same time so i'll just show you our uh, the demo site so once i'm logged in as a student i have access to all the uh, pathways which of course every grade will have uh, their specific level and their uh act, you know digi champs and digi pro associated with that so i'll just take you through one of the ones let's say level 4 so this one is uh, related to scratch of course the, all the other options are available so including like for example vocabulary if a student doesn't understand through the context so for example i need to know what exactly is output so automatically i can find that and this will you know i can go back to the content content or course page where i can do i can track the progress of my own how i am doing compared to that i have also a discussion forum which allows within the platform itself the entire collaborative environment where 
I, I can have doubts, I can ask doubts, I can solve doubts of others, I can interact with the teachers as well. So, for example, there are multiple questions here. You know, one of the students have asked, how can we move the sprite? One of the other students has asked, how to create a costume? So, I can help this particular student through images, videos, or write instructions, and I can submit and accordingly I can do that. But uh, this is what the structure of the DG Pro level four is. For example, we have unit one, unit two, unit three, different units, and then AI comes in unit five, and then the capstone project. So for example, let's see how the capstone project actually looks like. So here is where, uh, as I mentioned, we don't, we just give the direction to the students. Uh, we give uh, background information, the project objectives, the requirement which they have, and we have also split the requirements into milestones. So it's easier for students to solve, and the teacher can also evaluate, okay, at this milestone, they were actually deviating. So what they can do uh, to do, you know, come back in track, and there are some additional challenges for differentiated learners as well. So let me go, I'll just show you the entire, let's say I'll go to unit three, I'll go to random movements. So this is one of the sub unit levels or we call it sprints. So yeah, I'll just, so all the content which you are seeing is also, uh, you would it will be visible for all of you in um, the textbook as well. And this textbook also the learner edition book is also a smart book, uh, which has a lot of QR codes, uh, videos, lot of, you know, graphic based uh, instruction, what each and every code does, a uh, lot of tips, the procedures, what each and every code, how to place it and so on. A lot of graphical, uh, you know, representation using the reference chart, you know, what exactly they need to do, the forever block, you know, the wait one second instead of a text-based, uh, you know, approach. Then you can see, you know, where, what exactly the show and hide and so on. I mean, you can see how we have graphically represented each and everything there is also different tips so if since the unit is about uh, the subunit is about uh, you know hiding and uh, unhiding so we have also given additional tips how they can use different options to do the same effect which they can do directly with the hide and blocks uh, tips as you can see each, there are a lot of tips there is also the bit by bit approach where you can see uh, how we can build the you know the major projects which they have split down so since they are learning about um uh hiding and uh reappearing so you can see their major game they are creating uh continuing the same thing and they are continuing and doing the same where they are appearing at random places uh, on the stage the uh, the main sprite hide for some time and they reappear at another position so previous pr uh, sprints they have learned how to move random positions now they are actually learning how to appear and uh, hide and then comes the mastery challenges. So you will notice the pedagogy is maintained and consistent everywhere. So we have the, you know, um, we have the inspire where, you know, a lot of games have the surprise factor, you know, you, the player shouldn't be able to predict something in the game already. So that is what the random moment is about. Then comes the engage and practice where all the instruction, the procedure is mentioned and comes, then comes the mastery task, then the reflection and then the assessment. So we have maintained this same pedagogy throughout. So eventually a teacher, whoever adapts Qubits, it's easier for them to you know, implement in the classroom. And uh, these QR codes, and in, in our e-learning platform, we have embedded the videos. So a student who has poor readability, they can watch this video and you know, do the same steps uh, as mentioned. So in, if, if so, multi-dimensional. So this allows multi-dimensional learning. A student who is very, uh, cannot understand from the procedure, they can watch the video and, you know, do the same thing. And then we have our own uh, white label scratch based platform, which will allow uh, students to, you know, do the activity as, as they are learning the same way. And here is where the students have to submit the mastery challenges. So these are different challenges, which allow students to, you know, uh, we test them based on their uh, skills, their understanding of the knowledge of this particular scratch based programming language. And there are different, so you can see, we give them multiple, uh, you know, codes, and they have to now uh, create as many uh, scripts as they want with this particular code. And you will notice these are all related to the same, uh, you know, sprint, which we are talking about, random movement, hiding and uh, show and all this, they can create multiple uh, ways how they can do. There is also a challenge where, you know, this is the output and they have to recreate this script. 
so we are giving a lot of these kind of challenges which will allow uh, students to you know uh, analyze and then comes the assessment part where there is a lot of multiple uh, multiple choice questions which the students which gets automatically evaluated the teacher doesn't have to worry about evaluation of this so once i submit i get the correct answer uh, automatically so if i click on show answer i can see these two were the correct answer so i get an explanation also so students are actually doing a lot of self evaluation work they know why they got it wrong what was the explanation why my answer was wrong and so on even you know questions related to blocks what blocks will do this and so on you know even questions like you know this is the script and how can you make the sprite move when the green flag is clicked so what will happen and so on so there are questions you know uh, predict the final position what will happen with this particular code so we give a lot of these questions uh, you know when you change the uh, x by 10 what is going to be the x and y values so we have related a lot of mathematical questions So they will write in over here. For example, if I write 200 and I can click on submission, I get the answers automatically. If I want to come back, uh, you know, exploring, I can save this as well. So as I do, there is also a lot of open-ended assessments, which is basically more on the debugging end. You know, we want to predict the output. You know, what is the difference between these? So these are more subjective answers which they can write. You know, what is the difference between these two blocks? You know, can you recreate the following uh, script using loops, and how how can they do, and so on. so this entire uh, you know process is what qubits offers which allows uh, students and you know it, it, educators especially where they can use all the mentioned strategies above and the pedagogy which we follow it is easy we have even offered uh, you know we have you know worked in collaboration with the steam team and they were very very impressed with the pedagogy which we have provided and they you know they were very happy with you know uh, you know our product qubits Uh, how we are integrating you know for the betterment of the computer science and creating an inclusive uh, you know environment itself from here so i'll just show you the the next print as well so same way you will notice you know looping the action you will notice how it is related to the real world you know we talk about uh, you know events which happens in a loop sun setting or the night fall the uh, Uh, states of moon the faces of moon and so on uh, then there is the video which they can see the engage and practice again comes in play all the graphical explanation of what is to be done each code what exactly it represent what is the what is going to happen in the direction how it is going to move and so on then you know each and every step how it, what they need to do where they need to place and so on and then comes the mastery task where they have different challenges Which they have to solve and come up with answers and solutions based on their own. And this entire, so we have our own uh, scratch-based platform. Yeah. Okay. So there is some issue in my uh, connectivity, based mainly based on that. Just so I will show you. so the benefit of this is you know uh, you can directly uh, sign in once you are you have the access to the qubit you can sign in directly to the qubit site uh, you know using the same credential and this will allow you to share projects okay seems like there is some issue in my internet but i mean we can we can uh, uh, of course if you want uh, you know proper demo we can you can always you know do a separate demo related to the qubit platform itself and then they will be keeping on you know doing this different kind of submission so as you can see the entire course is made in such a way where we are learning so i'll show the teacher guide as well Uh, in the meanwhile i would request all the participants to you know put in their questions also we are open to questions in case you have any questions please type them in the chat pod if you are unable to do so you can also raise your hand and we'll unmute the mic for you thank you
we move on just check sorry for the delay so we are here in the teacher guide so of course here is what will enable uh, teachers to you know take this and implement this in the classroom so we have also assigned you know aligned the different standards csta ita and english national we have also given what are the instructional design how to take it forward and so on we have also given an uh, understanding of you know how what are different project based integration we are doing so the different kind of projects they are doing at every sprint level and the bit by bit is basically the bigger project which they are doing again on the sprint level how they are you know proceeding to complete the same and this teacher guide has all the options where you know uh, the unit summary the list of sprints learning objectives even the sprint wise the granular learning objectives and so on uh including extended videos which you can use to show the students and learn yourself all the solution to the mastery challenges and different solutions uh, problems where the students can go wrong misconceptions all of this is enabled including the source code file as well so a teacher doesn't have to even you know go and code anything on their own they can just download the source code file and they can run it around and that, that would be enough for them to you know see how exactly it works and you can show the uh, you know output video and so on so you can see there are different kind of questions explain detail explanation for the teachers where the students can go wrong you know you can see uh, this can be achieved in two ways and you know multiple ways a student can solve a problem in including the assessment questions also all the type of challenges solutions all are available for the teachers so it is you know making the teachers that's why we mentioned that you know cubits is a very teacher friendly a uh, curriculum computer science curriculum and it's future ready because we are integrating a lot of options in here so if we take about the ai aspect for example the unit 5 is completely here we are doing uh related to emotion detection where the students are learning how to how to train a machine to detect their emotions the same pedagogy is used again inspire engage practice master reflect and then assess and we are asking students to you know different expression how they are going to uh, create an ai machine related to that and uh, for uh, for ease of access of course what we have done is uh, we have used this ai integrate we have integrated that's why i wanted to show our uh, scratch based platform we have integrated our own ai blocks so that it's easier for students to even integrate in with the scratch so what medium they are using if they are learning scratch we are using ai which can be programmed using scratch if they are learning python we are asking students to create ai systems which can be programmed using python so there is an interrelativity and they can easily progress just from the programming uh, side to the ai side where they are actually creating uh, you know aspects and you can see this is how they are uh, creating the emotion detection so if i move on to the next sprint they are actually learning about teachable machine a very popular uh, website which will allow teacher uh, students to create machine learning models all the steps are involved you know how they can create you know machine uh, uh, you know expressions based on this and based on that it will work out then moving on to the next sprint where they are learning about data sets and training so you would notice even even if you are from a you know cbse school you would notice a lot of these are actually introduced in grade 9 and 10 so we are introducing grades 3 onwards all the way till grade 8 9 10 as well so students can build up to what they are learning in the ai uh, you know uh, curriculum proposed by the government and the board as, as well so your students are actually you know doing a lot uh, of different activities as you can see they train model and then they can easily uh, you know uh, do different activities related to that and they can uh, you know uh, take it back to uh, scratch based program where they can make decisions made made on that and then comes the assessment so this this entire dg pro series as you can see focuses on uh, you know four levels of scratch and then comes the ai part where one entire unit is focused on scratch and then comes the project capstone project and this entire thing will be able to be uh, visible for uh, for the teacher where they can see each and every student's uh, act, uh, scores so i'll just show it quickly i i hope i'm not taking much time so if i log in as a teacher are if uh, there are a few questions regarding the same thing that you are showing them yeah 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 
So they want to know whether it's free or licensed uh, as a paid one. There are two questions on similar lines, and how yeah. to order for demo books. Right, right. Okay, so of course, uh, so, so first question to cater that. Okay, uh, does it require any license? So what we have done as part of the Qubits is that you know this comes as an entire curriculum. So if a school signs up with us, they get a school license where we can create teacher accounts, admin accounts that is super teacher accounts and student accounts. So all of this, the entire e-learning platform will be even we can customize. the entire e learning the one i'm showing showing you is just the demo version of that we can customize the entire e learning platform for your school so the students feel you know they are using the same learning environment of their school so we can make it completely school branded uh, this entire curriculum of course it is a paid one it it comes with three major components as i said the teacher guide the student edition book which is a textbook or learner edition book and then then the entire e learning platform which is uh, which allows uh you know a lot of uh, which which allows you know um auto evaluation uh you know a lot of unplugged activities which, which the teacher can access to and all this can be the entire platform is gamified so every action the student does uh including solving a quiz or watching a video or you know doing anything related to discussion so they will get certain experience point and these experience points they'll earn certain badges and the teacher also has certain features like you know uh, they can uh, enable uh, praise badges if a student has done a project well so they can you know provide badges praise badges to those students and once they complete a module a dg pro series or a dg champ series they will automatically get a certificate at the end of this uh, module so the teacher can easily check the progress of the student and they can see the scores of the students and how they have done as well so this entire e learning platform is almost like uh, a savior for a lot of teachers they can you know focus lot on facilitating the students instead of you know assessing or evaluating because all of this is uh, you know taken care by the system itself yeah and then the next question how can we use this in classes yes so a lot of schools uh, we have already you know uh, started in the middle east and a lot of schools we just launched in india for the last uh, you know 2 3 months back and we are having a very positive reaction and three or four schools have already signed up and uh, you know based on their reaction we have understood you know a lot of so this since each student will have their own uh, you know respective ids all their uh, you know uh, progress will be saved on the system it is all so we have if a student they can use in two ways a school if they can bring the students to the computer lab and they can do it uh, as shown in the uh, you know the entire content that they can it is more made for the student pace and student led classroom so they can learn it from the videos or textbooks or they can you know wait for the teacher's instruction and how they can you know want to teach it or they can also bring in their own devices where they can have access to this and because we have an app version as well so either it is an ios or uh, android device they can have access to the same content same e learning platform all the all the software where we have integrated whether it is text based or uh, you know uh, blog based they have integrated in our platform itself so students doesn't have to you know have any new software to be downloaded or anything everything is on the cloud everything gets saved on the cloud and it is easy for the teachers to access these files as well through our platform so we we kept it you know in in uh in a way where it is easy for uh, teachers they don't have to you know uh, worry about a lot of preparation before the classroom they don't have to have you know updates to a software or you know install any specific thing it can be available as it is how to order the books only yeah, the books also you can do so as i said it it goes parallelly if you want uh, just the textbook you can do that you if you want uh, both the both the methods of learning where everything is uh, available online as well as you want the textbook that is also available if you want only the online uh, uh, you know e learning platform that is also available so of course that these all uh, our sales team will contact you regarding this uh, if if uh, we will we'll be providing a form at the end of this session so it's easier uh, for everyone So oh, just a second, I will. So oh, the teacher end as well. 
just a second. So of course, from a teacher uh, point of view, there is a lot more options. You have a leaderboard where you can see each and every student, how they're performing, uh, which uh, I can filter it by grade and section. I can see how my section is doing compared to other sections. I have an entire class roster of the classrooms, which I teach. So I can again, uh, you know, filter based on the grade. I can check their, uh, you know, digital reports, portfolios of the each and every student. So for example, if I click on any one of them, I can see which, uh, course they have done, what is their progress? This student has completed 9%. So I can see how the class is performing as well. And I have access to all the courses, as, as mentioned, one with the grades I teach or the section I teach automatically, I'll get the courses according to that. There is also an assistance uh, tab where all the different kind of webinars or workshops which we do related to newer uh, technology, which we provide. Uh, also the teacher guide will be also available here. So it's easier for teachers to learn from the assistance tab itself. And for example, if I want to you know, uh, check on any student, I can just click on the grade book and I can see each and every student's progress, how much they have scored and you know, all of that can be visible over here. So this way I can you know, track students, how they are doing, how they are performing and so on. So this is just a simplified version of the teacher. Of course, uh, this entire uh, platform can be customized for you. Uh, yeah, so we can take more questions. I, if there is any questions, uh, you can just write on the chat and uh, yeah, how how to order for books only. Yeah, so I'll just share the feedback form. Uh, so you can type in your email ID over there. So we will contact you uh, based on that. Any any questions? Uh, regarding the uh, first half of the webinar where we spoke about, you know, the different approaches and the strategies and uh, also about Qubits, if you want to ask, we can, we can take the questions. I guess uh, there are no more questions there. Yeah, yeah, I'm just sharing right now for everyone uh, the feedback form. Uh, I hope it was uh, you know knowledgeable and uh, you had a lot of points to take away from this webinar. If there is any, uh, yeah, whatever you have, okay. Yeah, whatever you explained was, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so I, I can, uh, okay, if you don't have more questions, it's more of, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone. I hope, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you had a lot of, you know, points to take away from this webinar and I hope you can now, you know, effectively uh, apply these strategies and approaches. Even if you want, you can, you know, use the Qubits methodology or the pedagogy which we have created. Uh, we are open to, you know, uh, everyone using that as well. And I hope all of you benefited from this workshop and uh, we have more workshops coming up on different uh, topics. So stay tuned and uh, uh, Minakshi, if you can share the link where all the updates are there on the upcoming uh, webinar. Yes, I've already shared it in the chat box. Uh, they are all available on our website, www.yatsi.org.